JT Show. What's going on, you sexy beasts, and welcome to another episode of the Smash JT Show, my weekly episodic adventure discussing divisive issues in the video game industry and beyond sometimes. It airs every Friday, and without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Before we get started, make sure you hit that like button, and if you haven't already, smash that subscribe and the bell for notifications. This week's episode is going to focus solely on leaks. Leaks are extremely prevalent, especially in the world of entertainment, and even more so when you dig down to the world of video games. Now that YouTube has become a prominent source of information for millions upon millions of people out there, many people, especially creators, are trying to find their own avenues to get views and clicks on their pages. And with that being done, leaks are becoming kind of like almost a news source that they want to dig into further to find more people to subscribe to their channel. And from a creator's perspective, I can't really blame them, but I like to steer clear from leaks on this channel because for myself personally, I don't like leaks. I like to be surprised from the actual publisher or creator of the game when they actually want to announce it. Getting the information early does absolutely nothing for me personally. Not to mention that half the time I get the information, if not more than that, it's wrong anyways. So it doesn't make sense for me personally to get excited about leaked information. Now the reason why I'm bringing all this up is because recently there's been a big leak with Smash Brothers. And I haven't really researched it that much to be perfectly honest because I don't care about it. I can't wait for the Smash Brothers game, but... I don't get why everyone is drawn to these leaks about these characters that I'm not going to discuss if anyone out there is like me. You probably don't want to know anyways, and if you do want to know, there's plenty of information out there for you to search out. But as far as these broad Smash Brothers leaks in particular, it's really dividing the entire gaming community where some people can't wait to find out what's next and what's been leaked while others are in my camp and they don't care, they don't want to know and they'll wait for the publisher to announce what the actual characters are going to be once the game actually releases or whenever they decide to let that information out. There's a certain kind of magic involved with letting people know that this is actually going to be a part of the game coming from the official source. And when it gets leaked early in situations like this, it kind of stings. It takes a little bit of that magic away, especially if these turn out to be true, because once Nintendo does officially announce these updated new characters that will be coming to the game, it probably won't have the same kind of impact mentally as it would have if you didn't hear about these leaks prior. But to each their own on how they want to handle that, Sometimes leaks can work to your advantage in the entertainment industry. I mean, I look at like the the iPhone when they accidentally left like the iPhone 6 behind at a coffee stand in San Francisco and somebody found it and they actually had hands on with the iPhone 6 way back when that was coming out and taking pictures of it, posting it on social media and it spread like wildfire. And for a situation like that, they weren't able to compromise the system or find out what was going on with the internals of it, but it did perk the public's interest as far as getting excited about what's coming and getting people talking. And from a sales perspective, there's definitely something to be said for leaks when they're done properly in the right areas of entertainment. But as far as video game leaks, sometimes they could work to the publisher's advantage, but for the most part, I feel like they could really take away a lot of what their big oomph is when they actually plan on telling you themselves. Nintendo has done an excellent job with preventing leaks for the most part over the past 20 or so years. And a lot of that can be attributed to the Nintendo Treehouse at their offices in Redmond, Washington where the people are working there. It's basically like the FBI. You can't get in and out of there without the proper credentials and being screened before you get employed there as someone who's not going to divulge secrets to outside sources. We are in the lobby for Nintendo's headquarters here in Redmond. I'm not allowed to show you too much, but this is what you would see when you come into the building. We are on the roof of Nintendo of America's offices in Washington State, and we're on their, their famous living roof. It's one of the few images we are authorized to show you of the, uh, the headquarters. The building is actually behind me, but like I said, we're standing on the fourth floor just outside some Zelda-themed conference rooms. 
Nintendo is good at this, other game companies not so much, but as internet technology progresses and YouTube gets even more and more prevalent with the actual information, more and more leaks will start showing up as that's something that apparently a lot of people want to find out about. For me personally, like I said, leaks are not my thing and I'm not really sure what the actual draw is to them because half the time they're not real anyways so I don't understand why people would get excited about them if they're not even sure if it's true or not. I mean, I love talking about video games and potential things that may or may not happen but when you start introducing false promises and fake facts to the equation just to keep a conversation going, I feel like at that point it's gone a little bit too far. But I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about leaks in general. Do you want leaks from games? Do you can't wait to find out what's coming out and what's going to be a part of them and things that the publisher isn't necessarily ready to divulge to you, but you find out from an external source early because you know people who are in the industry or people on YouTube find out about it and tell you about it? You want that? Or are you in the camp of, you can wait, you're in no rush, you're fine without hearing leaks. In fact, you might not even want to hear leaks because it might ruin the surprise for you. Let me know about that in the comments. I'd love to hear where everyone stands on this issue. And as far as this week's smashing video of the week, I want to recognize Russ Lyman for his excellent work on his short film called 8-Bit Slasher. This is the best video I have watched on YouTube so far this month. It is an excellent film, totally worth your time. It's about five minutes long hysterical, entertaining, the cinematography, the writing, everything about the short film 8-Bit Slasher is an absolute blast. It's a thrill ride from start to finish, so definitely check it out if you're not familiar with it. And great job, Russ, on making this video. It was an excellent watch. That's where I'm going to end this week's episode. Again, I want to say a special thank you to all the Patreons listed on the screen right now. Without your support, I would not be able to continue to do this. So thank you. If anybody else out there is watching this and you're interested in also supporting the channel, hit that Patreon button for as little as $1 a month. It makes a huge difference. Also, if you haven't already, you enjoy the content I'm making here, hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications. And if you missed last week's episode, I'll put it on the screen right there. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, you stay sexy.